Hello ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome indeed to today's webinar, where I'm very pleased to say that we are looking at what intelligent data capture means to you, your invoices, and your KPIs. In particular, we are looking at the Orange Business Services story. So I extend to you a very, very warm welcome indeed. My name is Susie West, and I am opening up this session today. And I will be taking your questions towards the end of the session as well. Um, just for those of you who don't know, I set up ShevServicesLink.com in 2007, specifically uh, to serve as a platform for leaders in finance and accounting, uh, shared services and outsourcing, to help them come together, information share, share best practices and tips, find out um, more about leading technologies, like the technology we're going to be touching on today, the KFAX technology, and really to help them glean new pieces of information which, would, uh, which they can then take back to the office to help with their own performance. So we've been doing that for about three and a half years now and uh, gaining great traction, certainly in Europe, and we are just about to um, take on the United States. We have our first event over there in October, which I uh, will be touching on toward the end of this webinar. So uh, please do find out more on our website and do become a member. We have about 3,000 members and membership is free. It means you've got access to some fantastic information online. So let's have a look at the next 60 minutes uh, and what the agenda looks like. I'm going to touch briefly on how this session works and then talk a little bit about the intention of this session. And then I'm going to be handing directly over to our presenters for today. And then I'll be taking your questions in the last 10 minutes of the webinar. So in terms of how this session works, uh, GoToWebinar is a very straightforward and comprehensive platform. Uh, but should you have any technical questions, we do have technical, technical support on the line to help you. Uh, but really importantly, questions. And uh, many of you will have questions um, concerning this area. And for that reason, we would like to take your questions, and um, how that works is that you will um, you have in your Gator webinar panel, uh, you have a section for questions. Submit your question to me, please, and I will put that to our speakers in the last 10 minutes of the call. So please do take me up on that. So moving on, let's have a look at the intention of this session. Um, Data capture and uh, data capture technology and intelligent data capture in particular is very much front of mind for a lot of shared services organizations today. Now, um, last fortnight uh, in July, uh, sharedservicesLink.com ran e-invoicing Europe. And uh, Pete Lachlan, who's actually presenting on this webinar today, was one of our key speakers. And it was very, very interesting at that conference because a lot of organizations uh, that are looking at e-invoicing and are looking at their e-invoicing project, they're encompassing within that project uh, intelligent data capture as well. So um, those people that are even looking at e-invoicing are looking at data capture as part of that e-invoicing project. And of course, those, are the, those people that aren't looking at um, e-invoicing per se are looking specifically at intelligent data capture to introduce them some significant efficiencies within their account payable process. But I thought it was very interesting that those people that are talking specifically about their e-invoicing project have uh, data capture as an integral uh, part of that long-term goal. So um, also, I think that it, the intention of this session is, is to understand a bit more about how you receive your invoice um, and when you receive that, that actual data and that document what you actually do with it. So there's this kind of opening of mindset that it's not just about the receipt of the data and the receipt of that invoice. It's how do we treat that, um, that data once we have received it. So uh, what we're going to find out a bit more today is about looking at technologies like the KFAX technology, uh, not just about on the, to, to receive the data, but also um, how to handle it once that data has come in. So really not looking at the invoice receipt in isolation, but really from end to end. 
And finally as well, an intention of this, this session is to, um, to, to look a bit deeper into data, data capture technologies and how they have matured um, faster indeed than other tech business uh, B2B technologies out there over the last few years. So if you were looking at um, OCR or data capture technology maybe three or four or five years ago, I think if you started to look at it again today, you would be very surprised at the advancement uh, that many of the technology providers have managed to, um, to afford in the last uh, three or four years. So with all that in mind, I'm very pleased to present our, our first speaker for this webinar, uh, Tony Davis, who is um, an expert in AP automation at CoFact. Over to you, Tony. Thank you very much indeed, Susie. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Before introducing our guest speaker, I thought I'd like to tell you just a little bit about COFAX, the organization, and some of our solutions. COFAX have been in the capture and recognition business for something like 20 years. We really are a global company with something in the region of 1,200 employees. Where we don't have a direct presence, we have a comprehensive network of partners, including system integrators, resellers, the whole channel, and uh, BPOs. We cover all industry sectors, and we have a proven capability on exactly that, all industry sectors. Um, some of our European customers, we're, bearing in mind we're a global organization, we're actually very strong in Europe as well. Uh, as you can see on the, the slide here, we've got uh, industries right away, uh, right across the board, including Orange Business Services, who will be speaking to you in, in a moment. Before we get to that, Aberdeen, uh, the Aberdeen Group have completed uh, yet another survey, and they found that finance ma managers are really feeling the pain of uh, the need to reduce processing costs. There's a distinct lack of vis visibility into, the, into the, uh, the whole AP process with high cycle times and consequently very bad cash man management. They're looking for lots of different ways and options so that they can improve this. What's pretty much top of the, the, the list is the need to automate um, uh, or at almost every level and priority the standardization of invoice receipts and the workflow processes. They, they plan to do internal assessments of their AP capabilities and to find more potential to optimize. Interestingly, the integration of e-payable solutions with other systems is about as important as the centralization of AP processes. Um, the COFAX platform really consists of three stages to help AP managers address this solution. Step one is the capture of documents at the point of entry. And this means from anywhere, on any device, and in any format, whether it's a flatbed scanner from a, a remote location, or a multifunction device, or um, fax, email, um, paper, of course, any document on any source from anywhere is really the key message that we want to get across. Step two is transforming that data into process-ready information. Uh, intelligent document recognition is exactly that. It's not just turning text into uh, readable characters. It's recognizing all information the way it comes in. At this step, you classify the documents, index them, and automatically extract index or metadata from structured and non-structured forms. This eliminates the need for manual keying. Furthermore, we separate multiple documents automatically, eliminating the need for manual sorting. That really helps a lot when it comes to multi-page reports on application forms. Step three is delivering process-ready information where it's needed to people, processes, applications, workflows, content management systems, everything that you can imagine. And by the way, we connect to something like, uh, I think it's about 140 back-end systems right out of the box. And this brings it all together. With COFAX, we really do have one platform to automate multiple processes and bridge the information gap between those. It helps you eliminate costs and risk and improve customer service. Thank you for that, and uh, what I'd like to do now is just hand over to Susie for a quick poll before we get on to some of the metrics uh, from Aberdeen. Over to you, Susie. Thank you very much indeed, Tony. So you've got the poll on your screen now. If you can tick the box 
most appropriate to your own situation. Um, how much does it cost to process an invoice today? So obviously we've got the figures there in sterling. Um, is it less, this is an average cost of your purchase and your, your PO and your non-PO invoices. And just to help with the definition, this is calculated from receipt of invoice. So we're not including the purchase order cost in this. So um, what we're talking about here is the, uh, uh, um, the average of your PO and non-PO invoices. Also, the different kind of ways that you handle the invoices, the manual invoices, the, um, the invoices captured by uh, technologies uh, like the Kfax solution, invoices that are received through EDI or e-invoicing, so the average. How much does it cost to process an invoice for you today? Less than a pound. Uh, one pound to two pound fifty. Two pound fifty to five pounds. Five pound to ten pounds. Or is it indeed over uh, ten pounds? Uh, waiting for a number of you to respond, please. Uh, we've got 42% of you that uh, have voted. We normally like to get these figures up to about 60%. So if you haven't already responded, uh, please do so. The more of you that respond, the, uh, the more meaningful this benchmarking data is. So we're up to about 55% of you. If you haven't responded, please, please do so. I'll be closing the poll in three, two, one. Let's have a look at some of this information. Um, coming up on your screen now, you can see uh, that 0% are coming in at less than one pound. Uh, so 0% of you coming in at less than one pound. And uh, a third, a third, a third, really all the way, um, or 30%, 30%, 30%, all the way up to 10 pounds, but with 12% 12, 12 of you coming in at an average of over 10 pounds per invoice. Very interesting. And back to you, Tony. Well, thank you very much indeed, Susie, again for that quick poll. Um, interesting uh, information there. Um, it kind of, uh, I have to say, I think the audience are doing better than the average because according to uh, the latest survey from Aberdeen, uh, Aberdeen, I beg your pardon, the cost to process one invoice is for the traditional uh, organizations is just under 18 pounds. Those that are even better than average, which our audience seems to be much better than average, comes down to about £12.68. But those that have automated bring that right down to th around the £3 mark, which is really quite significant, which means from the, the top to the bottom, that's a difference of you know £14 something to the bottom line. Um, before we go on to the next slide again, which is about cycle times, I would really like to hand back to Susie for another quick poll. Over to you, Susie. Thank you very much indeed, Tony. So coming up uh, on your screen very shortly, and again, Tony will use the results of, the, uh, of this particular poll to benchmark against and compare with um, some of the results that have come from Aberdeen Research. So coming up on your screen now, what is your average cycle time from receipt of invoice to ready for payment date? So we're not talking paid, we're, we're talking ready for payment. Is it less than 10 days? Is it 11 to 20 days? 21 to 30 days? 31 to 40 days? Or is it indeed over 40, 40 days? So um, please, if we can get these numbers up nice and high in terms of responses, we're up to 48% of you responding, 52% of you responding. If you haven't responded, please do so. I cannot urge enough. This is very much for your benefit so that you can see how you uh, compare with your other peers that are on the line today. 55% of you have uh, voted. Uh, so just to remind you, what is your average cycle time from receipt of invoice to ready for payment? Please do tick the appropriate box if you haven't already closed the poll in three, two, one. And we have 61% of you voting there. So thank you for that. Coming up on your screen now, you can see the results. So we have, um, we've got a very promising 20% of you with um, processing the invoices on average less than 10 days. I wonder if you work largely for the public sector. Uh, and then 11 to 20 days for 25% of you. So really, I mean, it's very, very positive there if I do the, the quick math. We've got about 75% of you, if I've done that correctly, it doesn't sound correct, but about 75% of you um, processing invoices within 30 days and uh, the remainder um, over 31 days. So interesting, and back to you, Tony. 
Yeah, thanks again, Susie. That is interesting information. Um, it actually does bear out what Aberdeen Group have been saying as well. Um, however, I think they've probably taken a, a slightly bigger poll than we have today, and they found that traditionally it's around 40 days that people are still taking to, uh, taking to, to get in a position where they're ready to pay an invoice. They reckon that if you're doing better than average, you're getting that down below 14 days. And so I think our audience are doing very well indeed. But again, just by automating it completely, that can come well under four days. And the government mandate these days, within the United Kingdom that is, is to pay, is to be in a position to pay within 10 days. In fact, I could be wrong, but I think they're even reducing it down to five days. Furthermore, so extrapolating that, you only have to work out figures and basic sums. If you're just doing 10,000 invoices a month, and traditionally that's going to cost you around 180,000 pounds, better than average again, it's around 120, 130,000 pounds. And if you automate that, that comes down to a whopping reduction of 33,600 pounds. That's a monthly saving of 145 pounds plus, which I don't think anyone in today's uh, environment can afford to ignore. Just to put that all into context, you'll see that uh, Juniper Networks, one of our customers, they're based in the States, but they have shared service centers throughout the world. When they first implemented MarkView, they were doing somewhere in the region of 62,000 invoices um, uh, a year. And they had about five employees doing that, five full-time FTEs. You can see that they're now doing just under 1.3 million invoices a year with only 12 employees. Right at the bottom, again, you can see their cost per invoice was $4.72, I beg your pardon. So they were already very, very good at what they do, but they managed to bring it down to $1.61. So overall, the invoice costs have been significantly reduced, overheads maintained, and customers kept ha uh, suppliers kept happy. What I'd like to do now, uh, and I'm absolutely delighted to introduce and hand over to Peter Lachlan, who is the P2P strategist at Orange Business Services. Welcome, Peter, and over to you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Pete Lachlan uh, from Orange Business Services, and I'd like to spend uh, the next uh, 25 minutes or so, explaining the Orange Business Services story and in particular how we've developed an approach to electronic invoicing that embraces intelligent data capture. Uh, I'll tell you a, a little bit about Orange Business Services, um, some of the background and in particular what I think is our biggest challenge which is our long supplier tail. It's not a unique challenge, but um, it, it features heavily in our, in our strategy. I want to explain also about some of the problems that we anticipate with optical character recognition, or OCR, and some of the, the, uh, the thought processes that we went through in understanding exactly what electronic invoicing is and what it isn't. Um, I'm going to also explain um, a case study that we looked at, which is probably the most complex invoice environment that I can imagine, and finally explain the e-invoicing model that we developed. Um, I'll finish off with uh, explaining some of the challenges that we foresee. But just to start with some background, and I'll explain a little bit about Orange Business Services. Um, Orange Business Services is the business-to-business -business end of France Telecom. So some of you may know Orange uh, as a mobile phone retailer. That's part of the same group, but Orange Business Services is the B2B part of the France Telecom group. It's a global organization. We operate in, in over 200 countries. Um, it's a, it's a medium-sized business, about um, 200,000 invoices per annum. And we have, I would say, three main issues when it comes to um, accounts payable and the opportunity to automate accounts payable. The first issue is about effectiveness and efficiency. Our processes are archaic. Um, we use modern technology, of course, but 
when we look at the way we deal with invoices in terms of the process, it's probably no different to the process that would have been followed maybe 25 years ago. And because those processes are essentially manual, supported by technology, of course, but are still manual processes, inaccuracies uh, happen, errors happen. Uh, and the number of people that we have in, in accounts payable is, when we compare ourselves with uh, benchmarks, is excessive. So we have too many people doing things too, uh, too inefficiently. Um, second issue is, is one of the environment, and it's the environmental impact that our insistence on the use of paper uh, has. Um, we've calculated that our insistence on the use of paper contributes about 25 tons of CO2, and that's not something we're prepared to continue. Um, the, we want to eliminate the unnecessary use of paper wherever we can and wherever we're, we're able to. The third issue we have is, is one of control. Payment on time in, in our organization is sometimes rather hit and miss. An invoice will be sent to a local business. Uh, if somebody's on holiday, that invoice could remain in a, in a pile of things to do until they return. Um, and then it may not be the priority. It could be a few, a few days or a few weeks even before accounts payable actually see the invoice. Um, and that, that's not, um, that's not a, a good place to be. Um, we don't, because we don't have this level of control, we don't have the opportunity to manage our cash flow as yes. we might do. Uh, late payment makes supply relationship management a challenge. It's very difficult for a buyer to have a meeting with a supplier about, let's say, late delivery if the supplier says, well, if you fix your late payments, we can fix our late delivery. Um, and there is a real and recurring risk of being put on hold by suppliers. And that's an unacceptable commercial risk. So I'd like to just explain uh, very briefly what our existing process is. And it, it's, it's a standard process that would be familiar to, to most people. We have uh, an accounts payable department which is outsourced. And we have a finance system. We deal exclusively in paper invoices, and we scan every invoice that we receive. So the invoice is scanned, and that scanned image is then sent to Accounts Payable, where it's manually input. Um, accounts Payable applies some common sense business rules, like they check whether the supplier is valid and so on, and any issues are dealt with using um, a workflow. So the image of the invoice can be passed around the business, uh, and it can be annotated and so on to clarify any queries. So it's a very standard process. But we have a major issue, um, and that is that our supplier profile is highly skewed. Typically, when people talk about e-invoicing business cases, they talk about the 80-20 rule. 80% uh, of invoices are typically from 20% of suppliers. But for Orange Business Services, 20%, sorry, 27% of our invoices are just from nine suppliers. That means that we have this very long tail of suppliers that send us very few invoices. And if we were to embark on an electronic invoicing program, we would have to convert many thousands of suppliers in many different countries many different languages to electronic invoicing. Um, our kind of quick win for our big volume suppliers would only achieve 27% um, success in terms of uh, moving towards electronic invoicing. So that's, that's certainly our biggest challenge. Now, because we already scan our invoices, the obvious question, or the obvious opportunity, is um, why not use optical character recognition, or OCR? We scan the paper, we have the image, why can't we simply extract the data? Well, last time I looked at OCR, a number of years ago, um, it was template-based. Um, it meant um, 
creating templates for each supplier. So you would take a paper invoice and you would set up your OCR system to understand exactly where the relevant items of data was in, uh, in an invoice. So you would tell it where the amount was, where the VAT number was, and so on. But this required considerable maintenance. Um, suppliers change the format of their invoice, and you have to retrain your system to recognize a new format. You have to create a new template for every new supplier. And the results of those kinds of programs, those OCR programs a number of years ago, were fairly unimpressive. The effect was really just to replace account payable staff with scanning staff. So yes, you may make some saving through automating the accounts payable, but that saving will be offset by the extra cost of people who are building and maintaining templates. And there were many abandoned projects. And those that were kind of successful took much longer than originally anticipated to succeed. But the biggest challenge really for, um, for, for me in thinking about using OCR is that it's not really electronic invoicing. Um, many, many of you will remember a number of years ago, um, lots of organizations would encourage the use of PDF invoices so as to tick the box for doing e-business, particularly in, in public sector. But the reality is that whether the paper invoice is physically on paper or whether it's on a computer screen, it's still really a paper invoice. So what exactly is the invoicing and what exactly is an electronic invoice? The standard definition for an electronic invoice is that it's a structured message uh, designed to be sent from one computer to another that complies with an agreed standard uh, and it's presented in a very specific format uh, containing um, containing the contents of the invoice. Um, and there's a, there's a whole load of standards. Um, B2B standards go back to the 70s and 80s. So EDI, for example, there are four main EDI standards. But when you look at these individual standards, look at the number of versions of Edifact, for example, depending on when its last revision was, depending on the specific industry, there could be lots of different flavors of Edifact. And if you look at just a few examples of the electronic invoicing standards in Europe, the, the list is, is huge. Um, and it begs the question, you know, why do we have standards? It's so we all speak the same language. But if you have many, many, many standards, how can you say that you have a standard? I think we need to go back to, you know, think back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s when the standards were invented and when they were first developed, um, they were developed the way they were because computers are, are fairly dumb. They have to be told exactly how to process data. The messages needed to be efficient, they needed to be short and concise, and they needed to follow a very strict format to be understood. You get a comma in the wrong place in an EDI message and the whole message is rejected. But this is 2011, and computers aren't that dumb anymore. If a computer can recognize a person using a retinal scan, the kind of thing we see at airports these days, are we really saying that a computer can't read a paper invoice? And if it can read a paper invoice, why is a PDF invoice any less E than an EDI invoice? Now, I want to mention just a few words about accuracy because I think this is, this is critical. Um, and we hear lots of claims about some of these systems and some of these solutions about how accurate they are. And we've got to be very careful about how we interpret the statistics. So many OCR solutions, for example, will claim more than 99% accuracy. And, and I think this is a, this is a valid claim. But just because you're able to scan an invoice and using optical character recognition uh, identify all of the characters on that invoice uh, accurately, does that mean you get a 99% accuracy in terms of invoice match? Well, if you think about it, if you're looking at 
matching at line item level, you might have a, an invoice document that could have a thousand characters on a page. 99% accuracy would mean that 10 of those characters are going to be misread. And you only need one misreading of an important character for that match to fail. But even if you have 100% OCR accuracy, does that mean you'll get a high level, a high match rate? Does that mean you'll be able to automate your AP processes? Well, not really, because even if you read an invoice with 100% accuracy using OCR, if the data you're trying to match to is inaccurate or no good, if your supplier master data is poor and not maintained, if no PO exists for an invoice, so it can't find a match, then you won't be able to automate your processes. If you have garbage data, you have a garbage solution. So I think it's really important and really want to stress that um, to be cautious about how you interpret accuracy claims. And importantly, take a holistic approach to data management. Don't think it's just important to be able to capture data accurately from an invoice. This data has to be matched with your purchasing system data, and that too needs to be maintained to a high level. Now, I think it's important to, just to remember what our objective is here. What's the, from an Orange Business Services point of view, and also from generally from a point of view, what's the objective of an e-invoicing program or an AP automation program? The objective is not to get to 90 or 95, 100% e-invoicing. The objective is to, um, is through automating our processes to increase efficiency and to reduce costs. So the question that we're left with is how does some of this technology, how do these solutions perf actually perform in practice? And to understand that, I visited a number of companies who have implemented intelligent data capture in a big way. And the most interesting of these was uh, one that presented what I think is the most challenging environment you can imagine. This is a company called WPA, which is a, a healthcare insurer in uh, the United Kingdom. They receive many, many invoices. Um, nearly all from from doctors and, and consultants. So that's many, many, many suppliers, all of whom send very few invoices each. They may only send six invoices uh, a year, and they're not in a standard format. These, these are doctors. These are doctors who are no notorious for um, for their handwriting not being legible and so on, and they. Each invoice is entirely different, different shapes and sizes, different levels of quality. So for me, that was a very, very challenging environment and something similar to the challenge that we face about many, many suppliers sending relatively few invoices. Now, the benchmark best practice, according to Hackett, is that each person within an accounts payable function should be able to handle 40,000 invoices. So best practice would say 40,000 invoices per FTE. WPA, using intelligent data capture, managed to achieve 70,000 invoices per FTE. That's nearly twice best practice. And they're not alone. There's, a, there's another example, um, which is the Accor group, the, the, the hotel group, who have achieved more than 80% um, straight through processing. What that means is that 80% of the inbound invoices um, using intelligent data capture don't need to be touched by human hands. And that's the kind of level of accuracy that I was looking for for Orange Business Services. And those case studies um, have helped inform the model that we've developed. So I'd just like to take you through the um, our e-invoicing model. Um, 
This is just a reminder of our as-is process with paper invoices being scanned and being manually input. So we'll introduce into this model uh, a new component which is intelligent data capture. And by introducing intelligent data capture, that means that the, the step for manually inputting the invoice data disappears. So we immediately make a saving. Now if we can scan a paper invoice, create an image, and intelligently capture the data from there, it's an easy step to say, well, we can skip the scanning stage and ask our suppliers to send us an invoice that's already been scanned, if you like, or a PDF invoice. Why do we do that? Well, first of all, it's quicker for the supplier, but importantly, this is where we um, achieve our environmental targets and begin to eliminate the use of paper. But we don't stop there. This is very much part of a wider e-invoicing program. And absolutely, we will, with suppliers who are able to send us electronic invoices, work with one of the e-invoicing network providers and will accept pure electronic invoices as well. The big advantage there, of course, is that because the um, because it's a pure electronic message, the accuracy is greater, and the e-invoicing network helps filter out um, the um, poor invoices, those that don't meet some of our standard um, uh, rules. That means that our AP processes are simplified greatly. And then for the very high volume suppliers, um, we'll be able to enter into, into some kind of bespoke relationship, have a customized format. And in that way, we'll be able to avoid the costs of the electronic invoicing network provider. So at each stage of these, we're increasing the value of what we do. And we absolutely will migrate suppliers from paper to PDF, from PDF to e-invoice. And potentially, some of those uh, evolve towards um, a bespoke solution. Okay, so that, that's our e-invoicing model. Now, just before I summarize some of those messages, I'd just like to hand back uh, to Susie for another poll. Thank you very much indeed, Pete. So coming up on your screen now, um, when do you actually intend on automating or further automating your AP processes? Uh, you're all very much, I'm guessing, on this webinar for a particular reason, and um, that would suggest that you're looking to to uh, further automate or indeed to start automating your accounts payable processes. So um, when are you actually looking to be live with your, um, or at least get your project off the ground with your AP automation uh, project? So is it before 31st of October this year? Is it between 1st of November and 31st of October next year? Or is it indeed about 14 or so, 16 or so months away after 1st of November 2012. 50% of you voted. If you haven't voted, please do so. Um, I will be closing the poll shortly. As you know, we do like to get these response rates nice and high. Uh, so just show 55% of you voted. I'll be closing the polls. In 3, 2, 1, let's have a look at the results coming up on your screen now. Uh, you can see. 29%, so just shy of a third of you, are looking to actually go live within the next kind of three, four months, or at least get your teeth deeply into this um, AP automation project. Uh, just shy of 50% between 1st November and uh, the following 12 months. And then 24% of you after uh, 1st November next year. Interesting results. Back to you, Pete. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is interesting, and I, certainly when uh, I attend network, networking events and so on, there definitely seems to be um, quite um, a, a strong trend towards implementing this kind of solution uh, in these kind of timescales. Okay, Orange Business Services is quite, uh, we're just beginning our the invoicing journey, and we don't expect it to be without its problems. And there are two particular challenges that we anticipate. The, the first is, is 
about data and data quality. And I mentioned before about taking a holistic approach. It's not good enough simply to think about uh, for intelligent data capture um, and the invoice in general about having good quality data for the invoice. It's important to be able to. Have, it's important that we have good quality data in our back office systems too. Um, our supplier data needs to be uh, refreshed and needs to be maintained. And as far as our, our general P2P behavior, um, we, we've got to get that right. We need to have a good level of PO compliance. There needs to be a purchase order for every invoice as far as possible. And that links into the other challenge uh, about purchasing behavior. It's really important that finance and procurement are, are well aligned. Generally speaking, the invoicing or intelligent data capture will be a finance-led initiative, but it does require supplier relationship management skills, and it requires cooperation between finance and procurement. It's really important that the right hand knows what the left hand is doing. So I'd like to conclude, really, by just stressing what I see are the three most important points. The first is don't be too dogmatic about what e-invoicing really is. Intelligent data capture can complement very effectively an e-invoicing program. Secondly, is to remember why you're doing what you do. This isn't about getting to 100% electronic invoicing. This is about automating AP, AP processes to become more efficient and to reduce cost, however you do that. And finally, intelligent data capture is proven and it can help support an AP automation program to reduce cost, reduce risk, and most important of all, put you in control. And with that, I'd like to hand you all back to Tony. Thank you, Peter, for your time and a really interesting presentation. Uh, thank you very much, indeed. I particularly liked your comment, uh, your comment and your point about multiple standards not actually being a standard at all. Now, I'd like to tell you briefly about Cofax's MarkView AP automation solution, because fundamentally, MarkView sets up the invoice approval workflows using KTM, the Cofax transformation module, or IDR, as Peter explained, as the front-end uh, capture solution, it provides a thin client image viewer for approvers to review the invoice, annotate, and code appropriately. Importantly, MarkView uses the same level of security as your ERP solution with rule, rules-based approvers. For example, managers must sign for all invoices over a certain limit. A lot of our customers Actually, it's quite interesting that a lot of uh, our customers also use MarkView to manage travel and expense report approvals. MarkView is completely integrated with market-leading ERP solutions, Oracle and SAP. In fact, they're the only two uh, uh, ERP solutions that MarkView integrates uh, completely with. All invoice transactions are managed through the ERP, maintaining a single source of the truth of the invoice liabilities. Um, talking about Oracle and the, uh, SAP, over the last two decades we have worked really closely with both Oracle and SAP to create a truly integrated solution. We've achieved the highest level of partner certification including um, SAP's NetWeaver and uh, we're certified, we're also a gold partner of Oracle. So. Um, we really do work very, very closely with both of those vendors. In terms of the actual product, one of the key um, elements, and included with MarView, is a one-click approval thin client. This really allows for, for line of business and AP users to manage the approval process easily and, and simply. A complete document history is captured during the approval process, so every approver can see who's viewed the and who's approved the invoice uh, uh, towards payment. So there's absolutely a complete audit history. Apart from MarkView, the AP automation and workflow uh, solution, there, there are a couple of other um, uh, solutions that come with it. We like to call MarkView's AP Advisor actionable BI. 
Here's a screenshot of a typical advice, uh, advisor report. Using data from MarkView and your ERP solution, a finance manager can drill down to specific trouble spots. For example, here, we've just highlighted past due invoices. Um, and what is even more important, you can take remedial action. So it's actionable BI. You can escalate, reassign, and drill right down to any potential problems that may have an impact on your business. We also have another solution called Supplier Express. Supplier Express is a, it's really a supplier portal. It's an on-demand solution that's hosted by, by us, and it's solely for the interaction between suppliers and AP department. One of the benefits is the reduction and elimination of routine supplier interactions, which saves time and money for AP. Actually, as, a, as an aside, uh, the Hackett Group estimate that the average AP department consumes something like two hours each day responding to supplier invoice queries. With Supplier Express, these details are provided by simply logging into the portal, and there are no charges for the supplier to use this. Also, they can submit their own invoices via this platform, eliminating, uh, eliminating further uh, emails, PDFs, and so on, and they can even flip POs into invoices. So in summary, there's a lot more information that we can be uh, that we can provide you so please please don't hesitate to give us a call drop us an email we have white papers um, a comprehensive library of white papers we have metrics and we have lots of presentations that we can uh, give you the website is extremely good on that you have my contact details as well and what I'd really like to finish with is by re-emphasizing that we now provide a single end-to-end -end solution that takes the leading capture and transformation solution combined with the leading AP automation solution. The Cofax solution is superior to any competitive offering because capture, Cofax capture is extremely scalable and robust and a mature capture software means uh, enterprise requirements and is a full range of image and transaction uh, capture ap applications. Markview's Financial Suite, Advisor, and Supplier Express have much greater depth and breadth than any other competitive offering, and it's the most complete set of products on the market today. I'd like to finish now by thanking you very much indeed for your attention, and particularly your uh, particip uh, participation in the polls. Excuse me. So now I'd like to hand back to Susie. Over to you, Susie. Thank you very much indeed, Tony, and uh, very, very compelling uh, story there from, from uh, Pete Lockton at Orange Business Services, and uh, a very um, compelling overview from you, Tony, about the, uh, the Cofax and Mark View solutions. So thank you very much. Moving straight to questions, uh, we do have 10 minutes for questions. Do stay on the line, and do capitalize on this opportunity by getting answers to questions that are front of mind for you. We have had a number come through, uh, but just to remind you, submit your question in the question box that comes directly to me, I will then put the question to the presenters. Um, first of all, question for, for Pete, if I may. Uh, just a little bit of clarity, if you will. One of the um, viewers has just asked for a little bit of, of clarity on invoices processed per FTE. So when you're looking at invoices processed per FTE, which is obviously a very cheap KPI for a lot of shared services organizations or high volume AP operations, um, uh, some of them in, in and look at accounts payable and the number of invoices that they are processing, but also uh, other activities that an AP processor or an AP clerk might include. So, for example, um, coding, um, vendor data management, uh, vendor queries, filing, statement reconciliation, etc. When you're looking at your productivity uh, level, so number of invoices processed per head per annum, are you including those other activities? within that headcount or are you just separating all of that and just looking at the data entry AP people? No, it, it's looking at the the activity, it, it's really looking at the data and entry and the and invoice processing. But it, it can be it can be difficult. Um, not all AP processors will do all of that uh, data maintenance and so on. Some that, that will be uh, held held outside. But it can be difficult to draw the line. Uh, for, for example, uh, within Orange Business Services, we have a core AP team that deal with all of the invoice processing. 
but we also have people who uh, scan invoices who wouldn't be counted in that. And we have so, in, in some countries we have full-time uh, scanners. In, in other countries, there may be someone that just spends Friday mornings doing scanning. So it can be quite difficult. But um, the benchmarks, as I understand them, are um, focused purely on the process of, so uh, purely on those people that deal with the invoice processing. Good, thank you. And also, I mean, that chimes very much with when we're doing analysis of the market ourselves at sharedservicesLink.com or when we're working with other analysts who are looking at this market a lot and measuring key metrics. Uh, they have a similar stance and we have a similar stance. It's, it's looking at those people that are responsible for the keying and the data entry. And that's what we include when we're looking um, at product productivity per FTE. Also, I think when uh, the person that asked the question, you'll find that when you're looking at um, solutions like the CoFact solution, for example, uh, you'll start your business case off by, by putting in the people that actually key in the data. Obviously, um, there are further financial um, business benefits, but that's probably where you'll start. So um, I think that's probably got a little bit to do with why industry um, analysts choose to look at just the, the, the data captures and the keys when they're looking at productivity per FTE. Moving on. Um, so uh, we have here a, a question that I, uh, that's come up a couple of times, actually. Um, and maybe I'll put, again, this back to Pete, and also I'll follow up with Tony's view on this as well. Can you explain the difference between OCR and intelligent data capture? I know you touched on this a little bit throughout the presentation, but just to, to drive it home to everybody, what the key difference is between OCR and intelligent data capture. Okay, and everyone has their, their own way of understanding and explaining this. The, the way I understand uh, optical character recognition is that um, some computer software will be able to take a scanned image and do clever things to it, like enhance the contrast and so on, make it easy to read. And it's, uh, it's very clever being able to recognize all of the characters uh, within that document. What it can't do is understand the context of those characters. So it doesn't know the difference between um, an amount, which could be the total amount in the invoice, and let's say a VAT number. Now you can build templates to say, look in this part of the document for a number that's this many digits long, and that's probably a VAT number. That's kind of um, not terribly sophisticated, but that gets you a little bit more clever than simply reading the characters. What intelligent data capture does um, is it cleverly interrogates not just the information that it finds on the invoice, but also compares that information with information that's held within the purchasing system, like the supplier master data or the purchase order data. So if, for example, the system sees um, a VAT number, and it recognizes that VAT number as being associated with a particular supplier, it may be able to uh, confirm with a greater level of um, assuredness, if you like, that it really is that supplier, or be able to compare a purchase order number on the invoice with a purchase order number in the purchasing system to confirm amounts and things like that. And it's using clever techniques and combining the interrogation of both sets of data that gives you a much higher level of accuracy. Thank you very much. That's very clear. Tony, is there anything you would like to add to Pete's definition? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Peter. I, I thought that was a, a really good explanation of it. Um, I think that even um, just to, to expand on that and uh, a little bit more simply from, from my side as well, OCR, I tend, and this is just Tony Davis thinking this, uh, I tend to think of OCR as paper, optical, optical character recognition, whereas intelligent data capture, or IDC as we call it, really uh, encompasses data from all sorts of sources, whether it's email, XML, an image, it can even be um, text messaging, SMSs, or voice. So. It's really the expanding recognition of data above and beyond simply capturing uh, characters off a piece of paper. That's, that's the IDC, uh, according to me. 
Great. Okay, good. Two very different um, perspectives, but kind of joining up in the middle, if you will, there. So thank you very much for both both of those comments. Um, and that takes me on nicely, actually. Um, the actual kind of COFAC solution and also um, the solutions that, uh, that Orange Business Services is, is looking to help them make this step um, in your kind of e-invoicing project um, in the next few months. Um, are you, so to Pete first, if I will, are you looking to make invoice approvals um, through the technology provider that you, you that you use for this um, available on smartphones? So will approvers out uh, out in the field, if you will, be able to use their smartphones to make approvals? The the, the, the quick answer to that is yes. Um, it's um, it, it, is it in our uh, immediate short term, on our immediate short term radar? No, but it absolutely is a stated objective to make sure that we include um, smartphones and mobile devices um, in our approval processes. Thank you, and Tony, is there anything that you'd like to to add to that? Um, no, I think that's. Uh, I think Peter's absolutely captured everything perfectly, um, and. Uh, I don't think I can add anything further, Susie. Okay, fine. Um, but your, the, the CoFax technology allows users and approvers to use their smartphones to, to make approvals if needed if they're out in the field. Oh, very much so, and that is definitely the, the, the way of the future. It's still early days, of course, but it is absolutely technology. In fact, next week, uh, I'm at our headquarters over in, uh, over in the USA, and we are showcasing a number of uh, devices exactly as, as you're saying, where uh, it, it really emphasizes our platform where it doesn't really matter what kind of data you have from where and on what device. We can capture it and recognize it. Great, thank you. Uh, time for a couple more questions. So, Pete, um, I'll come back to you if I may. You have a very long tail in your supply base. Um, one question that we've got through is, have you made uh, efforts to consolidate that tail, and why, indeed, do you have such a long tail? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a very good question, uh, and yes, this is an ongoing exercise um, that my uh, sourcing colleagues manage. Um, why is it such a, a, a long tail? I think you need, need to understand the business in some detail. I, I won't spend a lot of time explaining, but um, a lot of the consolidation has happened in the, you know, in the uh, that nine suppliers where there's uh, uh, 27 percent of the invoices. A lot of the consolidation has happened in there, but you can't get rid of the tail and eliminate the tail completely. When you're operating a global business in 200 countries, and sometimes the level of business in some of those countries is, isn't huge, Orange Business Services isn't a huge presence in some of them, you are left with individual local suppliers that are, are still very necessary. So what I'd say is, yeah, absolutely right, yeah, the, the consolidation still happens. It's not a long tail because that, uh, no efforts have, have been made to consolidate suppliers. It's really there because of the uh, the, the global nature of the organization. Okay, thank you. And final question, again, back to you, Pete, if I may. Um, obviously, you're talking about the clarity of, or the success of, of this uh, technology being ever so slightly dependent on the um, quality of your vendor master database. So how, are, how do you or how are you planning to keep your vendor master database bang up to date or as up to date as you can? Okay. I, I think this is an issue that most organizations face. Um, vendor master data becomes stale um, and finding a justification to uh, put resources into keeping that up to date can be quite a challenge. Um, one of the things we intend to do is make a direct link between our KPIs relating to the success of e-invoicing with the data quality of our uh, vendor master data. And that gives us the reason to continue to invest. But I think the other thing I, I, I would point out, I've used this word holistic quite a lot. Anything within a P2P context has to be look at the whole of the P2P spectrum. If you do one thing in purchasing, it will have a knock-on effect in finance. If you do something in finance, it can have a knock-on effect. 
in supply chain. And it's really important to make sure that we take this holistic view across not just AP, but in data maintenance, in purchasing process, in our sourcing practice, and genuinely take an end-to-end -end view. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. So thank you very much to, uh, to Pete Lachlan at Orange Business Services, who incidentally is uh, a key member on our advisory board. And uh, thank you very much to Tony Davis for a, a very comprehensive and compelling overview of the, the KFAX solution. Um, just to remind you, we have a webinar taking place tomorrow. Um, it's largely geared towards our US um, uh, attendees and the US audience. But if you would like to join us for that, um, then you're very welcome. Our European series picks up again in September. Um, and as far as events are concerned, uh, we talk, talked a little bit about e-invoicing today. We have a one-day e-invoicing masterclass taking place in Berlin on the 15th of September. Um, and you can see we have a number of uh, exciting events coming up as well. The Summit for Leaders in Financial Services taking place at 10th to the 12th of October in Dallas and the SAP event in Europe um, later on that month. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not going to be joining us tomorrow, but you are going to be picking up the series again in September. I hope you have a wonderful and relaxing holiday and um, looking forward to welcoming you next time. Thank you and goodbye.